Since you hit the pause button on your controller to pause the game you're playing, you are now getting us. Welcome to the pilot episode for one of our newest shows here on Superfancom, Press Pause, where video gamers talk about one thing, and that's video games. I'm Retro Rick, and I'm joined by Jason Jace Amherst. Right here, Chris. Hey, Jace. And Deesh the Dillustrator. What's going on, everybody? Uh, today we'll be talking about ETH coming up soon, depending on you hear this. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, Jake, what, what have you been playing lately? Uh, I've mostly been playing uh, uh, on, on my stream, uh, which is Crit Hit Jace, same as all my social media. I've been playing a lot of uh, Borderlands, uh, the uh, Game of the Year edition that they put out, the uh, remaster. And I've been doing a lot of uh, uh, Warriors of Richie 4. And in my spare time uh, off streams, it's been mostly... Uh, just enter the dungeon you know, for uh, for quick plays. Nice. Uh, Deej, what about you? I've been feeling very old school lately this past couple of days, so I actually went back to start playing Final Fantasy IX, which was a <sighs> game so I'm, sa- I'm sadly going to admit that when I was younger, I never beat. But now I'm gonna make it up for. I'm gonna make it up to myself. I'm gonna actually complete it, and I've been loving the hell out of it. And speaking of old school, if you head on to Gigabits.com or Gigabits on YouTube, all during the month of May or Castlevania, they've been playing about 40 games dedicated to Castlevania. Um, and that's every Castlevania game ever made, including some titles that have uh, Castlevania characters in them, like Super Bomberman, Super Bomberman R. Ah, uh, so good. And... Um, uh, YY World, which is basically a single-player game where you unlock different characters. One of them is a Belmont. The other one is Mikey from the Yeah, <laughs> I love. Oh. Um, see, I've been playing. I, I don't really have anything new. I basically was playing um, WWE 2K19, and then um, over um, what's it called Gun Girl 2 for the Switch. Oh, uh, Galgan. Gal Gun, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Been wanting to play that. Just uh, looks so stupid. It it really is, and it's really it lost its charm for me. It's, it's I'm not a fan of rail shooters. Yeah, yeah. So have you you played uh, the new Devil May Cry, right? Oh, of course. Yeah that that game. You were absolutely right. That game is sick. That game is amazing. I wish I could play, but I only have a Switch. The, the, the visuals on that game alone are worth buying. Oh, I I beaten it, but and I but I was renting it. I want to buy it. Nice. Just so I can replay again and again. I love it that much. Well, now we'll swing over to E3 with our host Jace. Jace, what do you got? All right. So uh, E3 has yet to happen, although it is right around the corner. So uh, it's time to uh, dive deep into the rumor mill. Uh, not as many leaks as there have been in previous years. I think it's because. These companies are deciding to make their announcements first via Twitter or uh, reaching out to the uh, gaming journalist website uh, as they view those websites as more of an extension of their publicity arm. Um, So we're going to start right away with EA Play. Uh, EA Games uh, running their event uh, June 7th through 9th uh, for E3. Um, They're going to be, they have a list of times up for their streams, uh, they're going to be showing off uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, uh, Apex Legends, Battlefield V, uh, FIFA and Madden 20, and Sims 4, uh, according to their official schedule. Um, so, yeah, I'm not not really... Uh, I, I don't know what to predict out of these guys whatsoever, aside from I just keep praying that Jedi Fallen Order comes out good. Um, other than that, I just... Who gives a shit? Like, th- I'm, I'm kind of glad... I'm glad and both upset they're not doing a press conference this year, only because it was so fun to watch them struggle to try to be, like, 
it's, uh, hey guys, look, we're cool. Look at all this stuff. We're trying to generate hype. But in reality, they're just wearing a suit and going, we're making millions of dollars and investors, this is what we're going to do to make you more money. This is not totally a pyramid scheme. Uh, E3 used to actually be like uh, this holy, tr- at least when I was younger, I used to treat it like a holy tree where basically I set it up where I have, you know, back in my old place, we had the big screen TV, which I had, e- I had all to myself. I had E3 playing. At the same time, I had like a little activity table. And by that, I mean, it, I would have snacks so I didn't have to leave. I would have like, you know, my drinks. And during commercial play, I would actually had a little tiny TV with a Super Nintendo attached to it, so then I could just play games while I'm waiting for the commercials to go by. And then when I come back, I pause the game. So it was like my own little tradition. Now it's, I don't know, now E3 to me, I'm still going to watch it, don't get me wrong. E3 is almost just like, okay, yeah, that's a thing now. There are so many other things nowadays, like PAX East, PAX West, where the developers get a chance to show off stuff, that E3 is slowly starting to fade into obscurity, um, and it's kind of unfortunate. Um, some people think, have suggested take it on the road as opposed to having it in California every year. That'd be fun. I think that could be the main reason why, because like, if I ever watch E3 and they make the announcement of certain games, I'm like, oh, I already knew about I know about that. I, I saw that on Twitter. I saw that on Tumblr. So that's part of the reason. It's like E3 is almost becoming non-essential. There was one company I was talking to, Rick, about this earlier. I think someone said they were not going to be at E3 because they almost see it as non-essential. Anymore. That was, uh, I think that was EA mentioned that. Although oh, uh, I know that, uh, yeah, because I know that Sony, and and this is something worth bringing up too, is that Sony isn't doing E3 as well. However, I believe that's just due to a lack of announcements and uh, them uh, doing their own event, most likely as a uh, reveal for the PlayStation Five. So they don't have much in the tank uh, left for the PS4. Nope. I was actually shocked when I heard about the that they were announcing PS5, and then I was even more shocked of how long it's been since we've got the PS4. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, the price didn't come down on the system the way it did on the others. I probably will not have a PS4 at all. Uh, M- Marissa has hers because her brother gave it to her, um, and he bought a PS4 Pro. I just never saved up the money and, and never got around to getting a PS4. So, well, the, if if it the only reason I was able to get a PS4 was because back in the day when it was just you know it was still brand new, I used to work at a comic book shop, and because I was I was my boss's like number one employee. Not trying to brag here or anything, but yeah, because I was I was always on time. I was always handling all the sales and made the most sales of the shop. He got me a PS4 for free. Damn. Yeah, he was like, he goes, dude, this is like your, he treated us like, this is your Cronus right here. I was like, woohoo! Yeah, so most I, was, I ever got from a boss at Christmas was a Lego Dimension set. <laughs> well, hey, that game was pretty fun. I bought, yeah, for a while. I bought that game just because of Back to the Future. Not gonna lie. I, I, I just sold some of the, the sets off, the smaller ones, but I mean, I, I kept the ones that I really cared about. You know, uh, with, with the levels that I like to replay. Still a few sets of missing, like Sonic the Hedgehog that I'd like to get my hands on. But, I, I I thought I would have been able to get them for way cheaper during Toys R Us, uh, but even those didn't exactly go down. They in- marked up to mark down, unfortunately. I mean, like, I was in there constantly. I was friends with people who worked there, so it, it was one of those things where you, on some things you knew you were getting a bargain, and other things you looked at and went, that is literally maybe five bucks less. And if you look at the original price, it was marked up from where it was MSRP. The um, I got my amiibos cheaper than the Lego Dimension stuff. I, I bought Waluigi for three bucks. I was happy with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, because they had like fifty Waluigi. <laughs> but uh, Rick, anything uh, you hope to see out of EA or expect out of them? I'm still shocked that they're doing something for Sims Four. Uh, EA has yet to make a game I really care about, so not really. Well, EA, in my case, EA, every time they make a game, my exact reaction is, oh, that sounds cool. Wait, because, like, there's always that hesitation. of <laughs> Well, because, like, this is someone who I know it's, like, a trend to hate EA now, and I, you know, I do. Has it been a trend? Because I really think that they've been, like, at the top of the uh, the worst businesses list now. Like, within the top three, like, 
battling it out for number one with Comcast now for the past like three, it, four, five years. It feels like it's been a trend for the longest time, like because even when Mass Effect was still a brand new IP, when it was a brand new franchise, I occasionally met those people who was like, "Oh, EA is the worst company ever." I was like, "What are you talking about?" And Mass Effect is one of my favorite like video game franchises of all time. It's right up there. And the way they handled Mass Effect, the way they killed Dead Space, the way they they did Star Wars Battlefront, that was just that was like for me it was three strikes. I'm done with UEA. And then I started learning more and more about the horrors about them with what was that game called? Sim City, I think it was, with that disastrous launch. It was oh, it was Sim yeah, yeah. it was some game where they made it that you ha- you could only play that game if you were online and the the, I the servers think that were was so- the original launch of like Sims 4 I thought would was uh, only available like you had to have an internet connection for some odd reason. It could have been SimCity. I think it might have been, what SimCity 4000. It was so bad. I remember Team 4 Star made a did a video on it where Vegeta and are trying to get online. <laughs> uh, it, it was, was like, something yeah, I think like, it was SimCity. I think um there was also one of their like first person shooters as well to always be online to play. But then we have like stuff like Anthem from EA that just like was it just keeps getting worse and worse. You know, it's uh, Anthem Anthem is the gift that keeps on giving to game journalism like gaming YouTubers who like to make fun of it. Um, to me, Anthem is kind of like that one scene, classic Simpsons, at Homer's BBBQ, uh, <laughs> where the pig is flying, and he's just like, it's no, good. It's, still good. Yeah, it's still good, it's still good. It's gone. <laughs> yeah. It's gone, Dad. <laughs> like, that right there is Anthem in a nutshell. I'm surprised the layman gaming, since they were also in, in Australia, loves their Simpsons references, have yet to use that clip. Yet. Yet. But, I mean, like, that that really... I have a feeling that there'll be things they'll be like, See? See? We can still make it good? We just finally put out the Cataclysm? Please! Please! <laughs> no. no. Alright, so, moving on uh, to the first press event of E3 2019. It's Microsoft, June 9th, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1, 1 p.m. Pacific. And uh, there's quite a few rumors around about them, uh, with the... Uh, PlayStation 5 looming in the wings, uh, people are assuming there's going to be uh, the unveil of one or maybe two Xbox systems uh, for the next generation. I'm assuming one is going to be like uh, digital only for digital digital only support. Xbox One X, uh, Xbox One Sad. Yeah. It's uh, Xbox <laughs> One S <all> digital. <laughs> Thank you, Spawnwave, for that lovely acronym, <laughs> Xbox One Sad. Sad and X-Bone. This yeah. is, these are games, people. And wonder why uh, you don't take us seriously. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, they, they do have a lot in the cards. Uh, this, this is actually probably the, one of the longer uh, rumor sections. Um, it's said that From Software is working on a game with George R.R. R. Martin, um, and it might be unveiled at the Xbox uh, event. Um, that's interesting, especially because From Software unveiled their last big uh, game, uh, Sekiro, at uh, PlayStation's event. So I still need to play. I keep hearing it's really fun. We keep getting that kind of, like, from software, jumping from uh, their company. Now, whether this is a Microsoft exclusive, uh, I mean, they just announced that uh, they are opening the platform for uh, Microsoft exclusive games to uh, appear on Steam which is actually really cool, and they're opening the platform to Win32, which will allow for a lot more uh, modding and customization of the games as well. So their PC games will no longer fly under the radar. Uh, They're going to be on the biggest PC platform. Um, There's a good chance that this game could be a Microsoft exclusive, just outright. Interesting. Um, Then there's uh, just the ongoing rumor that they're going to reboot the Fable franchise. Um, that looks enjoyable, uh, potentially, if, if that's real. Um, there's rumors flying around for a new game from Rare. Um, it might even be a tease of a next-gen game. Um, a lot of people are pointing towards it being an online game, like Sea of Thieves. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, there's a big rumor flying around. Capcom is in love with the engine they designed for the RE2 remake. Uh, and there's a huge rumor flying around that 
Dino Crisis is getting a reboot, and that might be announced at the Microsoft show. We um, love that. Um, people have been done wrong in the last year. Well, they've been doing the Switch user base wrong, but I mean that's just because they've been lazy and not wanting to shell out a few extra bucks for a larger cartridge yeah. and forcing people to download the the second game of a two game pack. Right. Uh, and another I case, never understood that. Or in another yeah, case, overcharging for games that are on other systems. Like, oh, well, Switch users are hungry. Um, here's Resident Evil 1, 0, and 4 for 30 bucks a piece when you can get them for 20 on another system. There's actually, for the, well, there, the rumor, the rumor or the stuff that I keep reading about when it comes to, to the Switch is that it's not really so much the publisher who decides the price, it's Nintendo. Suppose it's actually Nintendo's and why, like, for certain, like, uh, for instance, uh, Bendy and Ink Machine, the game I that I, I actually was able to get a physical version of it of Switch. I actually love that game. Um, it's twenty dollars on the PS4 or Xbox One if you buy the physical copy, but if you want the Switch, it was thirty dollars. And I was wondering why is that more expensive? Is it's it usually the uh, the physical media, yeah. Yeah, is it is it because we're relying on cartridges essentially, and that's what they're saying. Like Nintendo has this deal where it's like it, you could put it on your system, or but you you can't like lower the price or something. They have some weird deal with Nintendo, which I'm willing to believe because as much as I love Nintendo, I'll be the first to admit that they've kind of like messed up in a bunch of things like when it comes to marketing or when it comes to selling certain products or underselling products like what happened with Amiibo and the NES Classic. Uh, and of course I'm still pissed off about the way that they've been kind of shadow dropping Amiibo. It's really forcing me to like twisting my arm into looking into that uh, whole second party reset bullshit. But I, um, I want to strangle Nintendo for how they're handling online. Why? Oh God. I have to go on my phone to talk to someone that, online. That right there is is an episode in and of itself uh, where where uh, we could definitely talk about what Nintendo's done right. I mean, but uh, as far as Microsoft goes, there's a rumor that the unveil of a new Splinter Cell game might happen because uh, Ubisoft has been very quiet on the Splinter Cell front for a while. It's a while since we've had a new Splinter Cell game, um, and typically Ubisoft press conferences tend to rehash what a lot of the other press conferences have already had if they've revealed a Ubisoft game. So um, there's also rumor of a new Ninja Theory IP under the name uh, Leading Edge um, for and uh, not yet the Gears Pop mobile. Um, yeah, yeah. Rumors, don't know. you know those Funko Pop, the Funko you know, Pops, the yeah, kind of like Pop how there've been Lego games for years. Like Pop is getting in on it now. Wait, oh wait, didn't they release that trailer? Yeah, they did. Like, yeah last, last year. year or something. Yeah, I thought that was a joke. No, that was legitimate. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Um, now How's people that gonna are gonna work out. I, I don't know. It's a mobile game. You know, we'll see what that's supposed oh, to be. It's not going to be like a Lego game. That You know what, mobile game, I, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. You know, uh, it's like a hardcore game, like on the Xbox One. It's like, I'd love to see how that's going to play out. Um, we might hear, because they also like to brag about tech specs, so along with information, they could be talking about their xCloud service, which uh, that they've partnered up with Sony for their cloud game service that they're apparently working on. Um, I'm not sold on cloud gaming. I mean, Google came out with the Stadia thing. Internet in America, that is a big thing. Any competition uh, in the areas where people live, so they have no reason to improve their service. So, I mean, it's like you're stuck with us. You're not going to get any better, so ha ha ha. Okay, I'll admit that this is a very stupid question of mine. Cloud, so what exactly is cloud? Would they on um, companies would just make send out new data or whatever out into cloud, and so, then we get down onto our com- consoles? This has been something that has been. Uh, they've actually been doing this a little bit in Japan because uh, they released a Resident Evil game and they released Fantasy Star Online to have these these servers that are running dedicated computers. 24 mm-hmm. 7 that are fully outfitted with knowledge around game or from that server. Oh, okay. I see what you're selling. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so the question is I mean, you'll be able to play this literally on any platform because you don't need hardware. So you could play a, like the next major Assassin's Creed game from your smartphone. But why would you want to do that? You know, well, that's how I, I, like, I get it when I get I, 
this is kind of like the same. This is the argument I used when it came to the new Diablo game. Because yeah. like, with Blizzard, they said like, well, people are always on their phone. Like, yeah, if I'm on the go, granted, I'll be on my own. If I, especially if I'm like waiting for my doctor's or whatever. But if I'm at home in the com- you know, on my couch in the comfort of like in front of a big TV, why am I gonna resort a tiny screen on my? I'm gonna want to use the big TV. Exactly. You know, I mean, if I'm gonna play a game, I'm gonna play. If I'm yeah. gonna watch something on TV. You know, then maybe I might, especially if I'm tired, have, like, Fire Emblem Heroes up on my phone or Dragalia Lost. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, if I want to play a game, I'm going to play it on my goddamn TV. Maybe on my Switch. You know, but, I mean, even then, I usually have Doc. So, yeah, yeah, there's there's going to be some talk about that. Some, you know, uh, Microsoft's been going in and on that uh, service... uh, uh, thing rather on the games, but they bought so many studios. I'm expecting a lot of surprises from them this year because last year they hit hard with game, 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 game. It was a nonstop assault. It was really refreshing compared to previous years where it's like we brought out a car. <laughs> I'm at, so. What I'm actually excited for it's it's not necessarily part of E3, but it is. It takes place during E3. Is Nintendo's Treehouse? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to Nintendo, because uh, they're kind of the icing on the cake. That's at least oh. how I see them every year. They get the last uh, press conference, quote-unquote, uh, the Nintendo Direct. Um, so the next press conference that uh, is Bethesda, uh, that, which is uh, Sunday, June 9th, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. Oh, but the, they better give everyone, <laughs> they better give everyone like the best goodie bags in the history of goodie bags. Oh, God. 76. That I, if I was, if I was in charge of Bethesda's like press conference, I like listen. I don't want to see Fallout seventy six. You, if we have to, we can talk about Fallout, but remove that seventy six right now. To to be to be the you know. So if Australia is uh, Simpsons clips and America wears South Park clips, you can just see Bethesda with Tom on stage. And he's going to be like that episode of South Park with the BB oil guys. He's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that, I know. We're I'm sorry. so sorry. I'm six feet tall. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's entirely going to be this entire thing is just going to be like, sorry. here's some stuff that we showed last year. Here's some dates for it. Uh, here's a little bit more Elder Scrolls 6. We're sorry. Because, <laughs> like, Rage 2 came out, and it just, I mean, like, I, I would have loved to have given it a shot. Uh, I love Borderlands, but then they announced Borderlands E around the time Rage 2 came out, and it's like, oh, screw that, Borderlands is coming out. And then well, I think Rage I think 2 some was such a willing, test. I think some people are willing to give Rage 2 a chance now, because right now, even Borderlands getting its own controversy, but that could be in a video of its own. That's that's just Randy Pitchford. <laughs> oh, Randy. Well, that could be an entire video of just, <laughs> of, <laughs> Jim, Jim just Sterling, Jim, stay off Randy. Jim, stay off Twitter, Randy. Jim fucking Sterling's on now, like, 17, 19 minutes tearing into Randy Pitchford, including the fact that Randy Pitchford had pretended not to know who Jim Sterling was and referenced him in a video. You know, it's like, come on, come on, Randy. Like, you know, just rename your rename to Randy Switchford, uh, or, or Shiftford, you know, just drop <laughs> shift codes, you know, and, and bring us Borderlands on Switch, goddammit. I want to raid Pandora from the comp. From the comfort of my bed next to my girlfriend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Bethesda's going to be damage, con- damage control for last year, I think. And that's that's really all I can predict. Um, which is a shame, because I love them opening with Andrew W. Day. I do enjoy them. And uh, the year just played out, just boom, boom, boom. One thing after another being a disappointment from them. What was the di- bigger disappointment, Fallout 76 or Anthem? Oh, for I think for me it was Anthem because Anthem was Bioware. Such, I mean, Anthem's, yeah, Anthem was something I was actually looking forward to, and Bioware is the company that made my favorite again one of my franchises of all time. And just to see I them mean, go they, this they low, hurt. And they made Dragon Age, and then it's like, oh, Anthem. I mean, knowing that they were doing that, I was like, okay, so is Anthem going to be more of a Mass Effect, or is it going to be more of a Dragon Age? And then it looks like Destiny. And then you start hearing, like, uh, uh, Jason Schreier from uh, Kotaku. And I am not a fan of Kotaku, but Schreier's work has been really freaking good with all this behind-the-scenes bullshit. Um, He has been a real investigative journalist. And, like, the stuff that he dug up about how Bioware floundered for, like, five years, not really knowing what Anthem was, you know? And then... 
he even, even how some of the people in Nowhere didn't know what Anthem was until they put out that cinematic trailer that everybody thought was real in-game footage, and it wasn't. Like, you even, know? even certain developers went, oh, that's the game. Yeah. That was the shocking thing. It's so even people were at Bioware didn't even know what Anthem was and, until E3. And it was just panic mode for them. Like, they, they talk about Bioware magic behind the scenes with, with uh, you know, the, the crunch periods for these games, which are horribly inhuman, you know, I mean, but but this is every game developer. I mean, we, we, we again can do another episode on, on the, the troubles in the game industry now that de- uh, developers are starting to break out and do more indie stuff. Um, definitely a future topic. But, yeah, I mean, Anthem, oof. Uh, it's definitely going to be a big, uh, big shit show for Bethesda to clean up. Um, and speaking of shit shows... Mm-hmm. Uh, Next day, June, the PC Gaming Showcase, sponsored by Epic Games. So, uh, yeah, Epic just putting their name right up on front for that, uh, for this year. Um, I never used to pay much attention to the PC Gaming Show, um, and, uh, I mean, I tuned in last year, and a lot of little games just kind of popping out and got me a little interested, and I was like, okay, cool, like Mander, you know, uh, like Mander, the, uh, exactly. Smear, smear. Um, really, all I'm expecting from this is uh, they've had a logo, logo up on a website for a while now, uh, recently, for Baldur's Gate 3, implying that there's going to be a new Baldur's Gate game, which is really exciting, especially if you like old Bioware, you like the Baldur's Gate series. Baldur's Gate 2 on, uh, I think, the GameCube. That was the, first, the only one I ever played, and I loved it. Show that off, great. Um, I'm sure it's going to be one of those timed exclusives, because that seems to be the new thing. Uh, exclusivity with games, uh, a lot of the big name exclusivity. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I think that the, the the goal with their pay distribution was supposed to be to get indie people on board uh, and get them away from Steam because Steam is a giant cesspool of garbage. Masquerade have already said outright that they love the Switch because they sell like three, four, five times as many more copies on the Switch than they do on Steam. They, you know, they, they get the big money coming from China, from Tencent, uh, to kind of do whatever the hell they want. And uh, case in point, sponsoring the PC Gaming Show uh, this year, we're going to hear a lot of epic exclusives. We're going to hear a big backlash online. And uh, I can't wait for the shit show. It's gonna be, That could be an intent in and of itself, is the uh, epic exclusivity shit show, because they've had a, the epic mega sale recently was a giant uh, <laughs> point of controversy. So the fact that they don't have a shopping cart... So you have to buy everything individually. <laughs> so you you have some unusual activity. You have bought these five games that are all on sale. Back you buying no Can't shit, actually, Sherlock. Are, you're using our services. <laughs> that that's pretty keen. You know, the fact that uh, uh, Borderlands and Vampire were pulled from the store at sale because spend fifteen bucks or more, get ten dollars off. Whoa, 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 hold up! You're gonna sell our games, and you're gonna before they even come out. Well, well, we we're not exactly cool with that because we're going to be six bucks and pay that ten bucks. That's on our dime. Yeah, but you're doing if you do that, sell shit on everybody else. Fuck you. Take our game down. Mm-hmm. So games, the gift that keeps on giving as far as uh, just developers both love them and hate them, and gamers both like I don't know, mostly kind of hate them at this point. We thought, oh, good for business. The bad decisions and just rushing this. <laughs> it went from, and from there is another to just, God, what are you doing? <laughs> chill, China, chill. We know you want our money in America, but come on. <laughs> All right, so uh, next show is Ubisoft. Now, of course, Ubisoft has become kind of the same old, same old to a degree um, with more things coming into it. Um, I mean, I loved their Ubi art uh, system, their... their uh, styled for platformers. You had, like, I think, Fallen Heroes, which was set in World War II. You had uh, Child of Light. You had uh, Rayman Legends. Such a beautiful engine for platformers and, and unique games. Uh, I think it was like unt- was based off Journey West, which I've yet to get and I really want to play. Um, but as far as Ubisoft goes, they do they do, do weird things from time to time. They gave us Starlink, a, uh, a uh, Toys to Life life imploded. Um, they gave us a weird thing one year. Uh, so, I mean, Ubisoft is always a bit of a wild card. With the same kind of annual things we expect from them. We expect something, uh, something Assassin's Creed. We expect the same kind of open world games with the radio tower mechanics. 
uh, every year from them. Um, I don't know, guys. I mean, the big rumors really are uh, Watch Dogs 3 being uh, potential set in London is what the uh, assumed link uh, going around is saying. Uh, there's rumors that they'll unveil a subscription service. They do have the Uplay, uh, Uplay launcher on PC, uh, so they might do their own thing similar to EA Play. Um, and there's rumors of them putting out a online roller derby game, which Ooh, sounds interesting. Derby. It's, it's kind of unique, you know, uh, so I'll give them that. Um, I mean, other than that, I mean, what what do you guys think as far as, like, what Ubisoft has the rights to, and we, we always know they've got a great working relationship with Nintendo. What what do you think Ubisoft might unveil if they got their hands on another Nintendo IP partnership? Sorry to press pause on this already paused show. Um, I know what me and D think of the, what Ubisoft will come out with in a moment and more, but first, let me just say thanks for tuning in. And sorry for the audio hiccup that you're hearing in the background every once in a while. Testing out a new show, show format as this is a new show, so we want it to be different from the main shows. Um, just, so just keeping that in mind. Um, but if you like what we're doing and you're enjoying the Gamer Talk, if you do like what SuperFanCom has to offer and you like to hear us get better, we do have a Patreon where you can help us get better and get new equipment. Also, we offer some great uh, gifts to you, like free DVDs and comics. Also, we have a coffee page and PayPal. Every dollar helps. Also, we have sponsors like JList, where for using our code, gets you 5% off your entire order. JList sells candy, cosplay, video games, and adult 18 plus items from Japan. Also, Humble Bundle, you can get some great deals on video games. Um, and Kawaii Box, where you get cute plushies, trinkets, and a whole bunch of cute stuff from Japan every month. And by Bobby's Roll of Cards and Comics. Uh, you can find out more by visiting all these links in the description box below, no matter where you're listening or watching listening and now back to the pause so already during your pause game well i the last e, the last ubisoft game i played was actually that rabbit game which That's i actually amazing. which i did i thoroughly did it back at my old job when on my lunch break i would always whip out the switch and play that game as it was just fun really addicted to play with uh so I think if Ubisoft is still has a strong relationship, this ro- strong relationship with Nintendo, I'd like to see something like along the lines of like, uh, give us like RPG because I miss one of my favorite games ever is Super Mario RPG. And granted, we do have the Mario and Luigi games on the 3DS and even the Paper Mario series, but the and those games are good. Don't get me wrong, but totally. Super Mario RPG, I felt like I don't know. It just it had a certain charm to it that the other games did not match it was it didn't feel like like paper mario i feel like you know it had its own it had its own uh gameplay it had its own thing going for sumer i would love to see something along the lines of sumer rpg do something with the nintendo characters or even yeah do something again with the rabbits like make a make a super mario rpg game with the rabbits i like make it fun make it creative you, just go all out because that are their most recent collab was uh, Star Fox, which, which uh, apparently Starlink. I, I really want to get my hands on that game, like just because I heard that, Is that basically the, thing with the toys. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, I, I heard that, that, that yeah. basically the Star Fox content in that game was so good that it could have been its own Star Fox game and didn't even have to be Starlink. Yeah. So, so that's what I want to see. It's like I want them to do something really cool with Nintendo. I would love to see. Maybe, like, if they announce a Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom 2 game, I won't be that shocked, but I'll still want to get it, absolutely. So that's kind of what I'm only expecting. When it came to Assassin's Creed, I'm probably I'm probably by myself by this, but I just, I never cared for Assassin's Creed game. I played the first game, I absolutely hated it, 
And then I had friends who loved the series. They tell me, yeah, we, we know the first game wasn't as good, but play the sequels. They're much better. I did enjoy Black Flag, mainly because the voice was Matt Ryan, Con- John Constantine himself. So that really helped. Uh, so that one, that I enjoy the shit out of. In that, uh, But I've never been a big Assassin's Creed fan. I feel like they've all been just kind of the same kind of game and if you're enjoying it have at it it i'm not saying it's a terrible game i if you're enjoying it that's that's great it's just me personally i've been underwhelmed by it it's kind of what people have said over the uh the past uh, uh well i don't know if, how many people have pointed it out but again ubisoft kind of uses the same format for an open world game uh just changes the genre uh because they got uh i i is it the club, I think, is their racing game. Yeah. Uh, which is basically Assassin's Creed. Pretty much. Uh, you have Far Cry, which is first-person Assassin's Creed. Uh, you have Watch Dogs, which is Assassin's Creed, but you're a hacker. Oh, that... Uh, if you want to talk about disappointments, that was my biggest disappointment, was I was actually excited for Watch Dogs after I saw that E3, and then pretty much every one of my friends who was able to get the game told me, don't bother, or it or just like, eh, it's okay, but wait for a discount. And... The fact that the Wii U port was so delayed, and I was looking forward to that just because the Wii U had the whole touchpad with the built-in speakers and everything, and the problem is, of course, Nintendo not using other uh, development engines and stuff like that and being so out there and wacky. I th- it definitely killed the system, <laughs> but I mean, there, there are so many different things that that system could have done so much cooler, and, and like, Watch Dogs would have been one of them. I think it would have been a system pusher if it had come and had, like, Wii U exclusive content. Um, so, I mean, Watch Dogs, again, it's 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 Assassin's Creed, but you're a hacker. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, and, and of course, Just Dance. We're going to get another, you know, really cringe uh, Just Dance announcement. So, it's just like, we get it, Ubisoft. You make Just Dance, and you put one out every year. You're the only publisher supporting the original Nintendo Wii at this point. <laughs> Putting out Just Dance on the Wii every year. I will I will say this, though. There is one Assassin's Creed game I do get. I forgot what title it is, but apparently you play as, like, one of three different Assassins. One of them is this... You, it takes place in China, and it's, a, and it's a woman. Rogue? I think that was like a spin-off and wasn't it like a side scroller I think? I don't remember. Or I just Unity. remember Unity. I remember yeah. it was like it took different eras. One of them was like mainland China or something and it was a and it was a woman assassin and that one actually had my interest I was like okay, that I actually want to play. So I might so I might play that sometime in the future but uh until for then franchise, for France that's gone like and done like so much with uh western you know, uh, so, and then they did like China for that. How come they haven't done? Is it too easy to do an Assassin's Creed in Japan? You know, like you really sit during the Sengoku office? period. You know, and and like, do they not have somebody who can do re- feudal Japan in, in the Sengoku period? Do they have no way of like tying that into the Assassin's Creed storyline? You know, like that's that's what really kind of that. Like in feudal Japan, I'd actually play it, and I fucking hate those games. <laughs> Oh, you want to blow me away? Make a Samurai Jack. Oh, that'd be fun. you know how much? Make an awesome hack and slash Samurai Jack game. I would play the shit out of it. That, and, anybody, put it in, and you make sure you put it in the Switch. If anybody did that, though, uh, and we'll get to that in a little bit, uh, it would have to be one of the people who also has a show on June 10th. But before it's them mm-hmm. filling in for uh, the lack of PlayStation is Square Enix. June tenth, nine PM Eastern, six PM Pacific. Was, um, was it show just a really long video trailer? Yeah, and they ended on the Quiet Man. That game. Oh, <laughs> I wanted to like the, that game. The game that, the game that ranked number one as worst game of the year. Uh, the the game on, that was hyped titles. up in the the grand finale of their E three presentation, and then released like shadow dropped for fifteen dollars. I wanted to like that game so badly. Uh, you know, I mean, the gameplay in it me of the bouncer. That's why I wanted to play it. You do not bad. You, you, we we do not bad talk the bouncer. Yeah. Oh man, I, get, I there is Kino. I I, I love. Uh, I, I it's a guilty pleasure of mine, especially. I need to get my hands on a PS2 multi tap for that because that game was fun with four players. <laughs> Check out gigaboots.com for their two hour playthrough game. Uh... 
so yeah, I'm expecting uh, release dates uh, and footage. So we've seen Final Fantasy VII uh, from the last Sony State of Play, uh, you know, or as I call Sony Directs. They're basically just the same thing as a Nintendo Direct, but Sony. Uh, we, we saw more of Final Fantasy VII. I could care less about it because, it's, in my opinion, it's Final Fantasy VII with Final Fantasy XV's graphics running on the Kingdom Hearts battle engine, kind of. <laughs> so, like, which is what fifteen ran. You know, it's not Final Fantasy. For me, Final Fantasy is what the creator, Hirobo Sakaguchi, said. It's text in blue boxes. <laughs> you know, I'm a purist. Chris will argue with me because she thinks that Final Fantasy, especially the really old ones on SNES and stuff, are really hard to play. The random encounters suck. You know, she's she's a Tales of fan. You know, she likes a more action-oriented RPG, and I can understand that. I can see uh-huh. why she liked 12, you know, and, and, and uh, 12... So well, in her so defense, in, her, in their defense, I did. I do love Tales. One of the very first video game collections I ever bought. Yeah, no, Tales of Franchise is great. In fact, I would love to see more from them, considering that uh, when the Switch was announced, uh, Tales of was announced for it. Um, but basically, yeah, Final Fantasy VII. I'm not excited. Marissa is excited for it. I'll watch her play it, but I'd rather play the original. Um, now, the Avengers, on the other hand, is a franchise they've held on to the rights for for a while now. Um, it's I totally Avengers forgot about, about that. Um, they finally put out a logo teasing something about it. So we're going to definitely hear something about it. It's going to be riding the coattails of, uh, what was it, Endgame? Was, was the name of this last one? Yeah. Yeah, it's riding the coattails of Endgame and also the buzz, of course, about Marvel Ultimate Alliance uh, being exclusive on the Switch. We're in a bit of a Marvel boom period right now. I don't know what to expect from this. Uh, Dynamics uh, and IDOS are working on the Avengers game, so I don't think it's going to be an RPG. Well, yeah, they've owned IDOS for years now because uh, they own Hitman, they own uh, they, they Tomb Raider, and uh, of course this this is uh, the interesting one for me because I bought it for like two bucks when it was on sale once on the Switch. Fear it. Uh, they own Fear Effect. Uh, meanwhile, I just keep on saying, Dear Square Enix, you own Crystal Dynamics, you own Gex, reach out to Matt Seinreich and, and Seth Green, get them on as writers, maybe even take the Robot Chicken, you know, claymation art style, you know, for Stupid Buddy. Give us a new Gex game, because pop culture is begging to be riffed on and parodied. Give us a new Gex. That'd be, That's what I want to Hey, but Square, Square Enix owns Hitman franchise, right? Yes. You, know, I know this would never happen, but I would absolutely go berserk if they did a Hitman-style game of Shield, where your main characters were Black Widow and Hawkeye. I, I would not be opposed to that. I, I mean, would, Avengers, I would go insane if they did that. If Avengers makes bank for them, I can see Square Enix, unlike EA, because Square Enix doesn't care about the microtransactions and junk. They're, they're more about these big, over-the-top spaces. I could see Square Enix expanding on holding the Marvel properties and doing more games with them in different genres. Uh, we, we could actually have a renaissance of Western games as far as, like, you know, Square Enix owning IDOS and Crystal Dynamics and Junk. We could actually see a lot more out of that. So I hope Avengers blows my mind. Because it's almost guaranteed to be a part of uh, their presentation. Um, my only request, well, my only request about that about their Avengers game is please do not make it like Avengers Alliance because I've always considered it just like I may get hate for saying this, but I've always just considered it like a watered down Diablo clone. Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy sixteen is the big rumor. Everybody thinks that there's going to be some sort of news about that. I feel any kind of hype for this at all, and I freaking own every single one of them on Playstation 1, and what? I don't feel any kind of hype for it at all. Whatever happened to Final Fantasy versus... Was it versus 15? Versus 13 got turned into 15, because it had been in development for 10 years, and Final Fantasy 13 was such a flop in a lot of eyes. I have I mean, played that game three times, and to this... I still don't know what the entire story. Well, I mean... I, I can't figure it out. I, I watched Spoonie's review of it. 
like trying to understand the story, and I was still confused. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. If you have to read pages of text to understand what's going on in the game and not actually have the game play out in front of you and explain things, you know something's wrong. I'm guessing that's where uh, Bungie got the inspiration with Destiny? Most likely. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was my fear. It was like, it was like the, there was a point... You game is bad. Like when I was playing Dead, I asked myself, "What am I doing? Why am I doing?" I actually asked myself that question. Why? Like, why am I still playing? That's when you know a game has failed. Yeah, and it's understand what's going on. You got to go online and re- why do I do this? Is homework now? Yeah, that's essentially what the fa- other Final Fantasy game did. It was like you. This isn't fun. This is homework now. And the producer I, just seems so hell bent on like trying to make Final Fantasy Thirteen successful. So it's like, okay, let's do a let's do a sequel to it, um, and and this time we'll make so that you know you have to rescue lightning. <laughs> we'll include like time travel and shit in there. No, oh, it's confusing my. enough as it is. Square Not Enix. do that. Square Enix, their new rule should be they should avoid time travel because every time they time travel, it's always just stupid. Except for Chrono Trigger. Fair enough. Yes, but then they did. 13-3, which they tried not to even put the 3 on to, because at this point they were like, um, we fucked up twice. Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy 13. Who because is the asshole who thought, hey, let's put a timer on, right? Uh, I'd swear that the game was pretty much, they were so to sell the game that it was like, uh, dress her up as Cloud! Yeah, everybody likes Cloud! They'll get people to like her, please like Waifu Lightning, please! For GameStop, and they had a giant, like, billboard poster kind of thing of Final Fantasy well, Lightning Returns, and I swear, Lightning that was bigger than the entire party ever, as if, <laughs> as if Square Enix is just like, focus on this, you could have this, it's like, you are that desperate, I got it from free, I got it free, because I could rent games, like, whenever I'm, my boss, you know, whenever my boss got to sell, and I, I felt ripped off, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, again, I got it for free, so... <laughs> As did anybody who played any of Square Enix's games on the Xbox 360, but... Uh, so, yeah, uh, little footnotes to Square Enix. Of course, there's Tokyo RPG Factory, who uh, are behind the genius throwbacks of... Uh, uh, oh, God, I'm playing... I'm totally blanking out, and that's because I've been meaning... To, oh, yeah, and Setsuna uh, and Lost Sphere. Um, they, of course, are currently working on a game called Oninaki, uh, which seems to be more uh, inspired by the... Uh, yeah, oh God. Uh, series. It's it's more of a uh, uh, action game. Uh, during a Nintendo Direct, uh, I'm I'm looking forward to that. I'm assuming there will be more on Oninaki uh, during the presentation. Um, and then, of course, they also have um, their other retro style team, uh, uh, who I'm going to call the uh, the Bravely uh, Octopath team. They're currently working on something now. Whether it's an Octopath Traveler. Uh, spin-off sequel, because that did gangbusters for them. Oh, I know they recently I, released it on Steam. I uh, love that game. I adore it. I adore Octopath Traveler. That's my favorite Switch game to this day. Uh, I mean, I've, I've got such a backlog of, of RPGs um, that I'm going to have to start them on my uh, on my Twitch. But uh, uh, Octopath, of course, was, was one of the ones that I was highly anticipating, and... Uh, I, I've got this bad habit of buying new games constantly, yeah, and Nintendo... Boy. Nintendo, of course, just has me by the balls, uh, which we're going to talk about that uh, in, after uh, our next one. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's basically what to really expect, I think, from Square Enix. I mean, do you guys have anything wish-listed from them? Never. Uh, I, I've never liked anything Square has ever done. Uh, uh, an Octopath Traveler 2 would be cool. Um, I have played Lost Sphere, so I would. I am interested to see what else that group but in terms of like their, their stuff like Final Fantasy or even now Kingdom Hearts, I'm just eh, it's whatever. Yeah. Honestly, they could announce Kingdom Hearts six, ignoring four and five, and I'll be like, yeah, <laughs> it makes sense. Continue if you think about you know the story's continuity. <laughs> I would only care if they like out of nowhere announced like a third Parasite Eve game. They already did. It was called The Third Birthday, and it sucked on oh, PSP. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. That, that's right. Yeah, that, the sad thing is that was my introduction to Parasite Eve. Was I I'm so sorry for you. 
I'm so sorry. Yeah. Well, more, uh, I mean, well, movie. the only good thing it did was it introduced me to the franchise, so I go back and play it. And like speaking of what you mentioned, Jason, backlog of games. I actually found at a flea market the very first Fatal Frame game for PS2, oh. which I still need to get to. And I was able to find Sound Hill 3 original PS2 game, so nice. I have my own little stack of games <laughs> that I need to play. Um, so yeah, and there's there's a little bit more. I mean, uh, we, we were talking uh, Mario RPG earlier. With the original developers were Square, um, and Square has been getting buddy-buddy with Nintendo as well. Um, as the Switch has surpassed the number of PS4 sold in Japan, I'm assuming every Japanese developer out there now is going to be hopping on the Switch bandwagon hardcore. Um, and Square Enix included. Uh, I wish list want to see them put the, uh, the, the Mana Trilogy, the Second Bit Setsuji, Bring that over to the States. Give us an English translation, uh, an official English translation to Second Dead Setsu 3 uh, from the SNES. Um, and uh, Mario RPG 2, you know what? I mean, it could either get announced if it is ever going to be a thing, because the fans have gotten lukewarm on Paper Mario lately. Um, Intelligent Systems just hasn't been able to kind of do something uh, well enough with it. And they seem awfully busy with Fire Emblem lately, see so uh, a new Paper Mario in the cards. But a Mario RPG 2 uh, would be so out of left field. Announce it during uh, Square Enix's. But I have a feeling that some of that would actually be better brought up during Nintendo's uh, presentation uh, next day. Uh, one more to talk about on June 10th, and uh, this would be Devolutional! Yes. It's uh, 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, June 10th. Uh, I am predicting just... Yeah, uh, Waifu Nina. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I... I I tune into them every year. I liked their very first year the most because they had that weird first ever pre-post, post-pre-show yeah. thing, um, which had Don Morrison on the show. Uh, it was just kind of like drooling. Shad Gaspard was on the show. Um, um, clips of Kaiju Big Battle cut in and out the whole thing, including the Kaiju Big Battle show that I went to, Spadoglomania in Cambridge. Nice. Um that was just so beautiful, and I was, like, in tears, in tears of joy every so often. It's like, Dr. Cube would break in and stuff, and it's like, this is the most beautiful. And then they didn't <laughs> do that last year, and I was so disappointed. Well, they, end up, they ended the night with Rubin getting shot. Curious to yeah. see how that plays out. Um, so, I mean, but Devolver Digital, uh, they have a very close working relationship with Adult Swim Games. So, if they did do a Samurai Jack, mm -hmm. it would be at Devolver. Um, it's, that's the only thing I can think of. I mean, Devolver, of course, publishes nothing but indie titles, and they usually go for the more obscure, odd ones. Uh, they tend stuff, but then they do such beautiful games as uh, the uh, uh, the RPG that takes place entirely in Kira Windows. Uh, I forget the name of it. It's on my Steam account. I get it for, like, three bucks. Might, might want to... Um, where is it? Kingsway was the name of the game. Uh, Kingsway, it's an, an entire RPG uh, that plays in computer windows. It is weird as fuck. Um, and, uh, again, Devolver, Adult Swim, that partnership. Um, I actually, I mind a, uh, a Battle Chef Brigade 2, because that game was phenomenal. Call Story 2 is another one. Devolver is less about sequels and more about celebrating indie stuff, so, I mean, we can just where, where do you think the story with uh, with, with uh, RoboCop is gonna go? I don't, it could be, it, they could even just like forget it and reboot me. It's like <laughs> it's never happened. Um, Wolf Chaos. Yeah, yeah. I would like an announcement as a release date for that. Um, and and uh, my friend Pedro, I really, I'd, I'd like an announced date for that. I know Nintendo did mention something. I think in War Indies, a potential time period for release. Um, We'll have to wait and see. Uh, which brings us to our last presentation. Of course, Nintendo, the icing on the cake. June 11th, 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, the biggest rumor flying now months a mini. Because they're doing so well in Japan, a version of the system that doesn't have slide-off Joy-Con but can sync up a lower version of the dock. Um, thing to kind of fill the gap that the PS Vita had. Indie devs in Japan who did the Otome games and the visual novels. And, you know, we were huge on uh, something for that crowd uh, at that uh, 2DS 
uh, to the Switch. Um, I think is more likely to be announced more than a Switch Pro. Um, I think, a lot, including myself, who bought the thing at launch, would be a little solid Switch Pro, um, because I, I feel like if Nintendo did announce a new system, I would rather it be a home console system with beefier specs rather than a Switch with beefier specs. Mm-hmm. Um, just my feeling, Nintendo and new hardware. I mean, what do you guys think? I know, Rick, this is the first time you've bought into a Nintendo system in a long time. Yeah, since, like, the Wii and, like, I, I, no, I don't think any new hardware is gonna come out soon. I'm just, I'm more in, in games right now for them. But hers for a good like, maybe years. Sony and acting about it. Uh, for me, I've been a Nintendo fan like, forever. I Nintendo's biggest defenders, like even like same here. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> but yeah, but even though. Yeah, but there are even times uh, I can even defend Nintendo, but I'm. But to this day, I still love them. I love the Switch. I'm not expecting any. Just like Rick, what Rick said, uh, I agree. I don't. I'm not expecting anything uh, rare wise to be announced. Um, if they do, they if they do announce the Switch Mini, I won't be as surprised. But I'm imagining something. Um, I don't know. I'm expecting to be almost oddly shaped. The first 2DS was like how it, it, it was that weird. Brick shape size. Yeah, yeah. That, like, I couldn't even imagine pseudo Game Boy. I couldn't even imagine playing on that thing, like holding it. Yeah, it, it just looked weird to me. I, but the idea of a 2DS, I was invested in because uh, with whenever I played the 3DS, I I always had that stupid 3D turned off. I turned it down very low because I found that a lot of games just worked on very low. Uh, I mean, I, I got the 3DS, uh, the new 3DS XL, when that was that the face tracking 3D was considerably the launch 3D. Um, I noticed that games, as they went on, uh, used the 3D better and better, uh, or didn't bother using it at all. Um, like, uh, Tales of, uh, what, what the hell was it? Tales of Abyss. He was really freaking, because every time a text box came up on this, was so radically from what was going on in the game, it hurt your eyes. Uh, other games had massive slowdown. Uh, uh, you had uh, the, the Warriors games uh, this, uh, and Fire Emblem Warriors that just slowed down massively, even on the new hardware. Like uh, the 2DS, the original design was great for people who wanted to buy uh, the game for their kids, the Pokemon, you mm-hmm. know, and and thought that a hinge-based system would break. And oh yeah, anything with movable parts breaks. It's why it has a lot of problems with, with uh, just in general the Joy Cons not locking into place after a while or. The, uh, the control sticks wearing me quickly, um, depending on how you play your games. I mean, shoulder buttons were like that for years, too. But Because uh, when it came to Nintendo's early hardware, like, especially on Lonnie, I was always cons- I was always very lucky with that, like, because people, like, when the Wii came out, cons, and I had that, and I had Nintendo Wii, the first one, that thing yep. still works. I wound up selling like, mine, because uh, Marissa's is hacked. I did that hack for her. So uh, you know your relationship gets serious when you start going. Oh, we only need one of this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was it? Uh, I'm ex- the stuff I'm hoping to see for Nintendo. I'm expecting Yokai Watch. What I want to see. I want to yep. see more. But I know everyone just says, "Oh, it's just a co- Pokemon copy." It's like it's a it's a really fun game. I love it's the considerably different. Characters. Really, when you get right down to the mechanics. Yeah, and you don't just capture yokai. You have to befriend them and all that. Yeah, shit. so it's a little. So it's, it's like meets Shin Megami Tensei. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say like there are certain other 3DS titles I'm expect I would expect, but the thing I keep hearing is the 3DS is essentially be wrong. Um, I've been hearing this essentially thing that the, Nintendo's planning to end it soon. So uh, Nintendo are- has officially stated that uh, there are first party games in the card for it whatsoever. Um, and past few Nintendo Directs have had no mention of the 3DS at all. Um, I believe uh, the Kirby's Epic Yarn mm-hmm. uh, was was the last for title. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I think that the last physical release might just be here in the United States, Persona Q2, which uh, launches, I believe, on June 4th. Uh, nice. I hope I have the money for that. I had had a uh, pre-order down for that collector's edition. I want that for Coral. <laughs> So yeah, like I, I was seeing certain titles making their usually 3DS titles making their way to the Switch. You know, you already yeah. got Pokemon. Yokai Watch Four, I was told, is going to be going to the Switch. They do announce it; it's most likely to be a Switch title. I believe um, there was an announcement as to it being delayed. 
Uh, that would... uh, I can, I'll be, I can be patient. Uh, we have, but uh, let's see. I think they made, they announced that they're making Luigi's Mansion. Like they're making a third one. Yep. Yep. So yep. that I hope to hear stuff about that. That, and, look, that did look uh, like a fun trailer last year. Oh my! Uh, but the last, the last one I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, I would have any of you guys ever played Project X Zone? Any oh of God, games? I love Project Cross Zone. I would, I would freaking love it if they make a third one. Uh, outside for the Switch. That game is that you thought that you were like starting the level and just massive amount of dialogue, and then you started playing the level, and then more dialogue would happen, and then the episode start would pop up on the screen. You're like, this wasn't the start of the level. <laughs> Every time I fought a bad guy, he would shut up and let me kill you already. Yeah, I mean, if they find a way to streamline the game, love another Project Cross Zone. Um, I mean, that, that entirely to uh, Monolith Soft's court, who have been hiring more people left and right. Uh, they've been they're practically a first-party comps point for Nintendo as they worked on uh, uh, Breath of the Wild, and uh, I believe they had some people uh, uh, Mario Odyssey. Um, they've been doing a lot of support work with Nintendo left and right. So, uh, but I, I've heard so many rumors about them. Uh, there's rumors about Retro Studios as to what they had been working on aside from completely taking over Metroid Prime 4. I doubt we're going to think about that because the project was basically and given over to Retro. Um, if we do hear anything about that, it might be Metroid Prime Trilogy getting a Switch port. Has, um, has Nintendo done anything with Square Enix in recent years? Nothing exclusive uh, I can remember off the top of my head. What I think we wind up seeing is uh, being only a GameCube exclusive, and that franchise was Nintendo exclusive, mm-hmm. is uh, we might get our first look at Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, um, mm-hmm. the uh, the remaster of the original GameCube game. Um, we might get a chance to see that. Um, we go- we might get more details on Dragon Quest uh, 11S, the Switch port of that game. Uh there, there's a lot of things that we might get more details on, and then a lot of things that people just... That's, that's the fun thing about Nintendo, is that there's so many different game franchises people have wish lists for. That it's just, you know, oh, please come out with this. Oh, will we hear thing about this? What, obs- me, what, what might pop out out of nowhere? You know, maybe a new Star Tropics game. Hell no. like, That'd be fun. That'd be great. You, you never know what the hell Nintendo's going to pull out. Um... Also, if you just put Persona 5 on the Switch, and when I say that, I don't mean that Dynasty Warriors-looking kind of game. I'm talking okay. actual Persona 5. I want Persona 5 on the Switch, although Marissa already owns it, and the fact that they're doing a Golden with Royale, she's already a little... So, Clark's collected set, and it's like, oh, here comes uh, Royale, and it's like, what the... But can we can we just be happy that all battle royale games have already come out and there's no mention of any battle royale games in the future? Yeah, it seems I'm like at this point very, that that I'm market's saturated. I mean, hell, I made the joke about Tetris battle royale, and then they yeah. announced Tetris. Yes. Um, what I'm hoping f- if it if it did go, I actually hope we get a um, the world ends with you too. See, that didn't go over so hot with people. Basically, a mobile port, actually. Um, it kept a lot of the weird tap-and-touch mechanics from the cell phone version instead of actually letting you use the real controller controls. So it really didn't go over as well as it could have. Um, but you never know. Uh, I mean, that's the fun thing about Nintendo is that shit just comes completely out of left field. Um, I mean... I, I would like more Mario Kart information, like, you know, Mario Kart 9 announcement, maybe, or, or uh, you know, I mean, I would love to see Ubisoft get full on their hands onto Star Fox, but I think it's too close to Starlink for that. Um, Retro was rumored to be working on a Star Fox racing game. I don't like the idea of putting Star Fox in a racing scenario. I I like them as that rail shooter type yeah. situation. I would love a new F-Zero. You know, so I mean, like, there's lost franchises. If they're going to do porting, like they've been doing a lot lately with Wii U and, and 3DS style port, um, I would love to see Tokyo Mirage Session get a port. Um, but I think that it's still too soon and maybe might be too obscure. Um, I'm dying for Shin Megami Tensei 5 uh, information. Um, since they announced that and they've given us a little bit of a couple times towards that, uh, and I love anything Shin Megami Tensei, 
So, I mean, like, I've been hoping for that. Um, uh, what there's you, just... All right, how about, uh, like, what do you guys think for, uh, since they will announce it, um, DLC for Smash? Okay, so characters, this like, is the characters biggest we're expecting thing. to see. Yeah. I, like, a like character... who, who would we like to see, and who would who do you think they actually will? A character I would love to see, but I know it would not happen because... Uh, it's a franchise that hasn't hit that well in America, was I would love to see Jabanyan in the game. I would love to see, like, with his Pause of Fury yep. attack move. I'm, but, st- I'm, st- uh, I'm that- still waiting for... See, here's the thing. Nintendo has been coming out of left field with the process uh, for the game. These are characters Nintendo handpicked for Sakurai to work with. And, of course, Joker was the first one because they probably knew about uh, the Persona 5... Uh, uh, Musou game, and Sakurai is a humongous Persona fan. So, I mean, like, that's probably why that got first. Now, logically, I think that the next character, or next franchise to be rented in Smash, would most likely be uh, Quest. Uh, there's been a big rumor around that uh, being the next major character in the game is going to be something from Dragon Quest, which wouldn't surprise me because of Dragon Quest Eleven S coming out by the end of this year. Um, but there's also, um, if, if we're just going to talk about like what potential characters in DLC might be, um, based on their partnerships with other companies, if they do put out a new Mario RPG, Garen Gino would be the way to tease a new Mario RPG, yes. or I would lose my unveil- shit if we get Gino. Aesthetic alone is Smash. Yeah. And I mean, like, basically, the, the, the thing is, is how likely would the characters move set you know what they're known for be translatable into smash when they did the character poll uh years back i put uh simon belmont on there yep. and i included in my description the uh, the b up b left right and b down uh like i included the full description and sure enough when they in the character and they showed how he played he played out almost exactly the way i described in my entry in the Smash poll, how I wanted him to play, and I was so happy about that. It was like, oh my god! Like we multiple had, people we must actually have might get that another uh, Castlevania character because of uh, a certain. Which, which uh, which are we talking about the Castlevania collection? No Bloodstain. Oh, oh, that on the other hand is I think why Konami agreed to put Simon Richter into Smash along with release the A collection. Also and I'm still Dracula. disappointed. I'm I'm still disappointed that we didn't get the Rondo of Blood uh Symphony two pack. Yeah. Um Konami is shaking in their boots over whether or not Bloodstain will uh succeed the same way that Capcom was shaking in their boots over nine, uh Mighty Number no. Nine. <laughs> the difference being that Mighty Number no. Nine failed decided well, fuck it, let's make a new Mega Man game, because they f- they fucked up, and we can do it better. So, I think Konami kind of saw Capcom and went, oh god, if he does a bad job with it, we might be able to do Castlevania again. You know, and, and thinking, please no, Konami, like, you, you guys, just every time you try lately, you fail. I mean, M- Metal Gear, I've... no. Old Konami and Konami... Well, I thought, they, I thought they were. I thought they were done with the video games. They were only going to do mobile games and pachinko machines. They're still, they're still in arcades. Um, there's an awesome arcade where I live called Round One in Taunton. They have a lot of Japanese machines. Um, they still make Dance Dance Revolution machines in Japan. Somehow the Bamani series is still. It's on life support, but that it's still a thing. There's even a DDR spinoff that features the entire square ground that. Uh, that is usable, and you like get across the thing, and like it's it's slightly more interactive, so it's it's not the down left right that it used to be. It's really cool to people play. I don't think I could play a stamina to play DDR anymore. No, I, I'm fucking old. I'll admit it. <laughs> Even though I've lost weight recently, I'm the uh, same way. I lost weight, but I am something. Every, every time I wake up, something pops in my leg. There's oh, no God, DDR. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, like, and then I walked into like a casino that recently opened uh, not far from where I live, and I actually horribly depressed at the number of Tada Konami logo uh-huh. on these machines, and went, 
This is this is what I used to see in arcades. This is what I used to see when I walked into game up when I wanted to play a game. And, and now all it is is this. slot machines and Yu-Gi-Oh. What happened to the What happened to the Konami that I used to know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I mean, that, I think that'll wrap up. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I think uh, just in in summary, they're doing the uh, the broadcast to Nordic uh, has been a bit of a dark horse. They own the rights to so many things. Oh, yeah, um, um, well, supposedly there are fifty unannounced games that they have waiting in the wings. Um, one of the groomers, the Ocean. Uh, there could be a new Destroy All Humans game coming out. I can't uh, wait for it. I love Destroy All Humans. Another title being thrown on potentially is Darksiders Genesis. Because no, cool, Darksiders 3, they tried to move the series into more of a Dark Souls style. Uh, but yet it they just fine. recently Dark, ported Dark over. Darksiders 3 was fine. It played like every, the other two, and I loved it. Yeah, I mean, uh, the big rumor and the big thing people keep begging about is Time Splitters. You know, like... God, yes, yes. please. Wow. That's like, and, and, um, the uh, level creator. You know, I mean, they announced Heim, so that would be, that, that would be, the, oh, God damn it. So that would be the Pat moment, because uh, my, my friend Pat is infamous for it. one E3. I forgot what game it was, what franchise it was. I think it might have been freaking Kid Icarus, because that was the thing, was he would crack about, wise about it every year with Nintendo. So, what about Kid Icarus, huh? How come you don't use some, one, of, one of your old franchises, huh? What about Kid Icarus? Because Kid Icarus Uprising. Kid Icarus. Because the last time you made Kid Icarus, you made, you made the control so fucked, you had to play the 3DS on a stand. I, I played that while holding on to the 3DS, and I loved that game. Okay, and the the writing was freaking top notch. And acting, they got freaking Cree Summers as Medusa. You do not talk bad about Kid Icarus <laughs> Uprising around me. I'm not. But, say, it's not so much the quality game. It was just the whole controls, and you had to play in a stand thing. Well, admit, that the game. controls were a little e, uh, but the lack of a control stick. But I would not mind port or sequel to. Um, but uh, in uh, ba- basically. Honestly, I'm splitters. That would be my oh god damn it moment because Pat threw he threw his phone across the room and oh god damn it, I was scared. And so that would be my Pat moment is is uh, if, if they announce uh, time splitters. Uh, for the quick notes here, AT Games has announced an arcade cabinet. They're talking something like 350 games. It's going to be a full sized arcade machine. I don't know how to feel about that just because their Genesis stuff has sucked. Um, at the same like. The Genesis Mini, right around the corner, handled by M2, who get emulation every time. Sega Ages series is phenomenal. Uh, so, I mean, I want to hear some good stuff coming out of Sega this year. Um, arcade 1-Up's going to be there for the first time this year. They're going to announce some more of their, their bite-sized arcade cabinets. Mm-hmm. That ought to be fun. Um, big rumor flying around for me. I'm a big Borderlands fan. Uh, there might be, and I, I think this may be free DLC, to hype up Borderlands 3 is actually a prequel for Borderlands 3 for Borderlands 2. Now, if that gets announced and they say this is free coming right to you, I'm like, <laughs> like I will. The pre, not... pre, 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 pre sequel to Borderlands. So, like the, the pre sequel to Borderlands 3 or something like that, as as like DLC for free for Borderlands 2 for the handsome death collection. I would lose my shit. I would love it. Um,. The room line out uh, right now, either a GTA 6 or Bully 2 announcement. I'm not you, uh, but uh, it seems like with them, they're really focused on trying to milk an office ever since they started Grand Theft Online. Uh, Bully, uh, like, I'd be afraid that Red Dead Online kind of was blah, uh, that Bully 2 would get some sort of online thing and would also kind of suck. Um, and I forgot to mention this. This was another one that might be announced at the Microsoft uh, press conference. Dino Crisis Reboot. Glorious. Capcom can, can read between DMC5 and the RE2 engine, and Dino Crisis being that Resident Evil spinoff, I can totally see them relaunching Dino Crisis in the RE2 engine, because yeah. they want to use that engine more going forward. So, yes, please, I want that rumor to be true on uh, on, on that one. Uh, so those, those are the, the quick little one-off rumors uh, for the smaller uh, guys who do in press conferences. Any more, uh, any more wish list titles? Any more uh, mm. out of left field announcements you guys are hoping will get made? If, the, if, if Nintendo really does pull left field and do something special with uh, Ubisoft or even Square Enix, especially Square Enix, that will definitely, for me, be like uh, the big 
uh, the big shocker, big anything for E3 this year, if they do something like another Super Mario RPG, that I will just, you will hear scream in the distance, a faint scream. <laughs> that is me freaking out and fanboying over that. Um, uh, so just something like that. Um, I'm actually hoping, yeah, so that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for something really cool like that. I'm really curious to see what Square Enix is going to do with Avengers, if they even announce anything with the Avengers, because we've gotten a lot, the last Avengers games I can think of that we've gotten were, they were just like, almost like, I would just, I would kind of call them budget titles, you know, like Marvel yeah. Alliance, a lot of mobile games, like I'm, I'm, or the Marvel Lego games, which, you know, granted, <laughs> look, if you like those games, that's fine. I like Lego Mendons. Yeah. But I kind of want something a little more like how Insomniac handled the Spider-Man game, but take it with the Avengers. I think there's going to be at least one time I'm going to flip my... I don't know when it'll be, but I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nickname this the Marissa moment. It was on our anniversary this year. Uh, it, was, it was February 13th. There happened to be a Nintendo Direct on the day of our anniversary, uh, and we watched it together, and she lost her goddamn mind because they announced Rune Factory 4 Special and Rune Factory 5 was in uh, development. She loves Rune Factory. And so I'm hoping that Nintendo once again can kind of do something and have me flip out and be like, oh, like they always have something that has me doing that. So, I mean, like, Tuesday morning's going to be, of course, Christmas morning for me again, and it'll be a letdown like last year. It was like, here's 30 minutes of Smash Brothers information. So that was their big game, so Yeah. I would I would completely lose my this is just my last final thought. I would completely lose it also if I if someone announced a new Silent Hill game. Yeah, good luck with that. I know that'll probably never happen, especially ex but uh, if Konami really is trying, I feel like they're it's like someone at you know, not all of Konami, but someone at Konami is going, you know, we've been kinda dicks lately. Uh, let's try and make good graces with the gamers. Like, we're, you know, doing this whole thing with Castlevania, allowing them to make Castlevania, like, a TV show, TV show on Netflix, which yeah, is yeah. excellent, in my opinion. Uh, Re-releasing the games. Uh, I grant, yeah, there was Metal Solid, granted, or Survive. But uh, if they made a new Sun Hill game, and it was actually, and it looked really damn good, and it wasn't just a clone of, like, another game or whatever, I would start to have them again. All right, uh, and uh, how about you, Rick? Anything? Um, uh... Not really. What Nintendo brings, and like basically anything that devolves. Also, uh, <laughs> my friend uh, Sam, Nintendo fangirl, uh, won't be attending E3 this year again because she normally does. Um, my brother's actually attending E3 as a, as an actual game journalist. So, wow, nice. Yeah, so I'm hoping that he could tell me some things beforehand, uh, which um, I will yeah. gladly, uh, where I'll gladly share with the Sumam group as we can talk about it. Yep. Uh, she'll, well, be doing, uh, she'll be doing we... live streams from E3, uh, E3 and reacting to it, but she actually hoped for uh, the, the announcement of a new Animal Crossing game. Well, they already announced that last year, actually. Uh, there's just no date. Yeah. Uh, it's supposed to come out this year, so I'm expecting the release dates for that and Luigi's Mansion 3 uh, guaranteed uh, this year because uh, we've already got Fire Emblem. In the, uh, I, I think uh, we won't have a date for this summer because the, the announcement for this summer was Demon X Mod. Right, right. So that's probably August if I had to take a guess. Right. But well, that'll do it for us, and the next time you'll hear from us will be our E3 Hangover Show, mm -hmm. um, which will go into what went down, cover what we So, hey, Jace, where can people find you? So, I'm literally everywhere uh, as Crit Hit Jace. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Uh, most importantly, Twitch. Um, shamelessly plugging this out there, but uh, I have finally hit... 50 freaking followers. So I just need to get that uh, viewers per hour up to that three viewers per hour, and then I finally hit affiliate. Uh, so I am really freaking pumped. I'm, I'm getting back into the gamer chair and, and going to be streaming again somewhat regularly now that I've kind of come back from a little bit of a hiatus. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, um, and also... Uh, I've, I've mentioned this a little bit uh, in the past a few times. Uh, I've got a late night show, a live late night show in development right now uh, out of my studio for uh, Twitch as well. Uh, 
trying something new uh, that that I don't think I've seen uh, on Twitch before, and uh, I'm hoping it pays off big in the in the long run. So uh, when that launches, you guys will definitely be uh, one of the first to hear about it. Nice. Awesome. Deej, where can people find you? Uh, you guys can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at DJ Luongo Art. I have a show on Superfancom uh, called Doodle This, where basically I just do a bunch of like silly drawings and such. And I'm currently working on a brand new upcoming show. I don't want to reveal it just yet, but I'm working on it with uh, Sammy Soundwave, another co-host here on Superfancom. And when we start, we're going in production very soon. And when we create at least three, maybe four episodes, you know, in the in the rendering queue, then we'll announce it. We'll make a release date and such. But uh, basically, all I'm going to tell you guys is we're going to give you all reason to wake up early for Saturday mornings again. <laughs> uh, you can find me ranting about wrestling on Twitter at DballRick. Follow the channel on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at SuperFanComShow. Email us at SuperFanComShow at gmail.com. Um, if, you, if you like us and want to support us, do that via the ads you heard during the break, and as well as our Patreon, uh, Coffee, and PayPal. Uh, Till next time, uh, I'm, I'm Rick alongside Jason Deej. We now return you to your normal games. Uh, we leave you now with our ending credit song, which is a gem from the PS2 era, which is the ending credits to God Hand. Good night. Demon, what am I? It's time for me to choose my path. Power of my God hand, no evil doer will get past. Hand to hand, or fist to fist, kick the nuts or twist your wrist. God power keeps my pimp hand strong, so trust me or you won't last very long. Dragon kick your ass into the Milky Way. In a fight, but don't worry, babe, I'll be cool. The ultimate power of a god is now my secret. My defenses are impregnable. My style is impetuous. If it's too much, I'll grovel at your feet. I beg for mercy when I feel the heat. Jaw dropping attacks from my roulette wheel. Apocalyptic beatdowns from the God hand. God hand My arm, my arm, my arm, my arm, my arm, my arm I summon up the powers of the God hand Everybody wants a piece Who's next don't be a fool Style so slick they will make me dream. The God Hand helps me work out my stress. It's overpowering, I must confess. The only person who it doesn't work on is the girl who got me into this Olivia. Slicing through thugs with my shock wave. Shock wave. More beheadings than a guillotine. Head slicer. Head slicer. My arm, my arm.